Fifty Sides DC 2017 videos are brought to you by Threat Quotient. Introducing the industry's first threat intelligence platform designed to enable threat operations and management. And Data Tribe, a new kind of startup studio co building the next generation of commercial cybersecurity, analytics, and big data product companies. My name is uh, Khaled Al Hassani. Uh, detecting malicious SSL certificates using machine learning. I know on the schedule it says in your spare time. I haven't included that here. I'll get to that a little, uh, a little later. But uh, it's kind of, you know, kind of an accurate statement. <laughs> uh, so the mot motivation is you know, pretty much well known by now. That increasing share of encrypted network traffic, traffic let's say uh, half or more than half, of the network traffic is encrypted. And there is a, a push to uh, monitor the traffic for malware and other threats without man in the middle, meaning without decryption. And the SSL certificate uh, provides us with uh, a fundamental part of the encrypted traffic meta metadata. And it provides us with its information that uh, you know, we, can, uh, we can use. So as uh, as with any machine learning or data science project, first you need, uh, you need the data. And in this case, we need uh, labeled data, meaning we need uh, certificates that we know are bad, certificates we know are, are good, more or less good. You know, we know there, there can be some, some certificates that we know they're benign, they turn out to be, uh, to be uh, malicious, but in general, you know, benign certificates and, and malicious certificates. Uh, collecting benign certificates is, is not a big problem. Uh, there are many available. Uh, we use this, uh, the source uh, census, plenty of uh, millions of certificates there. Uh, we collect the trusted certificates there. We sample from there. Uh, Alexa 10,000 domains, we can we sample from there. And uh, trusted uh, certificate authority root certificates. These are self-signed, like a few hundred of them. Getting the malicious certificates is, the, uh, is a more challenging uh, problem. And this is done uh, by uh, our threat research team, uh, particularly Jason Reeves. Uh, basically collect the data, the IOC data of different malwares. Hmm? Okay. Uh, collect, diff uh, collect, collect IOC data of different malware, and for the ones that use SSL, uh, we, we store this, uh, this, uh, this data, and uh, for the ones that use SSL, go back and uh, scan, this, uh, scan this data, meaning port IPs, and, uh, and pull out the, uh, the certificate. For, uh, for this study, uh, so far we have a data set of about 13,200 certs including 4,300 4, uh, roughly malicious certs and uh, around 9,000 benign certs. We want to keep, the, uh, we wanna keep the, uh, the data set from being too imbalanced. We can collect millions of benign certificates, but that wouldn't be very helpful because we don't want to get the, the, the data set to be too imbalanced. If we look at one uh, a sample parse cert, uh, so some of the fields there, uh, serial number, begin date, which is the issuing date, in this case 2014, uh, end date, then uh, expire date, to th uh, in this case 2026. Subject fields include the country, US, the state, locality, organization, organization name, email address, common name, and in this case, there is some unstructured name that's there. It's not, not usually there. The issuer, in this case, we, are, we only have one field. It's uh, organization. The key length, key type, the signature algorithm. Uh, in general, there, are, there can be uh, you know, more fields for the issuer, including all these fields. So far, I mean, so far, it doesn't look very bad. You know, some names that don't look terrible. But if you look at the, uh, the, the dates, the issuing and end dates, this is a large, this is a large time span. 
And this is usually uncommon for, uh, for regular certs. It can be common for uh, root certs, but this, like certificate authority root certs, this is not a root cert. So there is something that might be, you know, might be malicious. Another important thing in, in certs is uh, uh, extensions. And these are additional feeds that can, can, can be present in, in a cert. I'm going to zoom in on the extensions here. Uh, so this, the ones that are present in, in this search are basic constraints, include CA flag, is this a certificate authority? Uh, there's, there can be another field called path length, meaning how many certs can be authorized in, in a chain. The fields zero here, I mean, it means that these, uh, these, constraint, uh, these extensions are not critical. So each extension can be critical or not critical. Key usage. In this case, it has three, uh, three entries for key usage. Extended key usage, this is relevant mostly for LEAF uh, certificates. And subject alt name. In this case, it has a DNS, this, uh, this DNS. So other, other extensions can be present in addition to the ones that we see in this certificate, including issuer alt name, subject alt name, authority key identifier, certificate policies, and so on. As I mentioned, each extension can be critical or, or not critical. To, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, machine, machine learning classification algorithms that, uh, that we use. So we, we, the basic idea is we want to build a, a model, train a model using the data, using some algorithm. And after all that, we give it a certificate. It will tell us if it's malicious or not. So we use these. Uh, these algorithms, well-known algorithms for classification, random forest, logistic regression, support vector machine. And uh, yeah, at any point in, in this work, we can switch between the algorithms. We're not really committed to any of them. However, we compared the uh, accuracy. And in this case, the, the performance we mostly care about is the false positive rate. And uh, of the three, using the same data sets. And the uh, random forest, in this case, gives us a better false positive rate, lower false positive rate. So 0.3%, I'll get into the details later. 0.3% compared to 0.5% for logistic regression and 0.7% uh, for support vector machines. In addition, and th this is important, so in addition to the uh, to the data set that we use for training, the labeled data set. We want to test how the classifier does in the wild. So we collect data from some network, and we test it on that network. So real network, not related at all to the training data. And we, we test the algorithm there to check the sanity. Because it might work for the data set that we have, but then when we put it in the wild, it might go crazy and gives a lot of uh, alerts. So for the rest of the, uh, of the presentation, uh, I'm going to be using uh, random forest. So a few words about random forest. Uh, it's an ensemble of decision trees. So what's a decision tree? Uh, this is an example of a decision tree that I got on a cartoon that I got from Wikipedia. Unfortunately, it's not a, it's not a happy one. It's a... Uh, a classification for passengers of whether they survived or they didn't survive the Titanic. So, not exactly happy. <laughs> uh, and it goes like this, you know, is the, is the passenger a male? If, if no, you have a, you have a high, high probability of surviving, 0.73, 73% chance of surviving. If yes, you go down. You look at another feature or another property of the passenger. And uh, the age. Uh, so I can see. Around. So is the age greater than 9.5? If yes, then you have a very high chance of not surviving here. If, if yes, if no, then you go down further more. You need to. You need more information. You look at uh, at another attribute or another property, and in this case, it's a number of family members. And you go yes or no. 
So this is a this is a decision tree. Now you want to build the decision tree. So you want to determine what what features you look at and what features you decide on, and the split. And this is done basic. This is done using uh, information gain. So you, did, you, you first you give you look at the feature that gives you the highest information gain from the split, which is in this case the gender, and and you go down. By the end of the training, you you uh, you build multiple uh, trees, and then. Which, which gives you your random forest, which is an ensemble of trees. So by, that's by the end of the training. And then you have a new certificate. You, you pass it through all these trees, and the decision, you look at the decision of each tree, and you look at the average, and it tells you if it's, uh, if it's uh, malicious or not. Um, we use the uh, you know, widely used, well-known scikit-learn Python library. And this, this uh, these calculations are not highly demanding. We do that on, I do that on my laptop, my, my laptop. So that's part of why we say in your spare time, it's not highly, it's not highly demanding. I'm gonna get into the core of the, of the work and the, uh, look at the, the results. The first step is, we have the certificate, we have the attributes, how do you, you what, what do you use from these attributes? We can't just give the certificate as it is. So we want to get, obtain or extract information in some form uh, or some representation of, the, of these attributes. So we have these uh, general guidelines or general options. A general feature, let's say issuer country, uh, we, we have these options. We can use just the value as it is, Issuer country is the U.S., for example, or present or absent. There is no issuer country. This can be another, you know, another way to encode this. Uh, length of a string value. This is useful in the case of the serial number because the serial number by itself doesn't really mean much. Um, so the extensions are similar, whether they're, you know, one option is just to look if the uh, if the extension is present or or, or absent. Crit critical or not critical. For some extensions, we dig deeper and we look at the values. Most extensions have multiple values, so we, we dig deeper and we look at the specific values. And for some extensions, we look at the number of values, number of subject alt names, number of issuer alt names, and, and so on. Can I get here into, uh, into this feature extraction from, uh, from attributes into some detail? Um, and this is mainly, this is basically the bulk of the work. The algorithms are well known, are well established. And the bulk of the work is, are actually two parts, obtaining the malicious certificates and doing the feature, uh, feature extraction. The serial number, we use the length of the serial number. The value of the serial number doesn't, doesn't mean much. You know, if two serial numbers are closed, then that, that doesn't mean that there is similarity. The, we use the length of the serial number basically because there's a correlation between the certificate authority and the pattern the, 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 between this, the, the length of the serial number. So there's some information there. Issuing and end dates, how do we use that? We use the validity periods in, uh, period in years. Like the certificate we saw, it has a validity period of 12. So that's the feature, 12. And whether, if it is, whether it's expired or not. The version of the certificate can be two, three, etc. We use the value of the version. The key length, it has specific values, 2048 and so on. So we use the value itself. Key type similarly, signature algorithm, we use the value itself. Extensions, the whole set. As a set, we use the number of extensions and which extensions are, uh, or whether there are extensions or not. There is some redundancy here, but the main idea is to use the number of extensions. Each of the extensions, the, the encoding take three different values. If it's absent, extension is not there, present and critical, and present are not critical. So it can take three, uh, three values for, for each of the extensions. Uh, we dig, for some extensions, this is a general one, for some extensions we dig deeper. We look at the number of subject alt names. We look at the number of uh, issuer alt names. Key usage has a specific set of values, and uh, any of these values can be present or absent. So we look at each value, like for example, digi a digital signature. So if it's there, it takes a value one. If it's not there, it takes a value zero. Uh, 
other values in cipher only and so on for for the for i think there is a set of nine values there extended key usage similarly similar to that authority key identifier we use the value as it is because in principle there is a limited number of uh, certificate authorities so the, the the value set is not overwhelming so you we, we can use the value in, in, in principle the uh, the subject and uh, issuer uh, fields. The, uh, the issuer country, we use the value as it is. So US, Japan, China, etc. Whether it's valid or not, this is another feature. We see sometimes values like XX, dash, dash, and so on. These are not valid, valid countries. So we use that as a feature as well. For all other uh, issuer fields, we use the values because you know, there is a, also, it's a, Less it's a more restricted set of, uh, of fields than, than the subject values. For the subject values, we use the country similarly to the issuer country value and whether it's valid or not. The other fields, because there is a large set, so it can be anything, anywhere, uh, we, use, uh, we use the values of the, the encoding is if it's absent or present, so zero or one. Now, all this are still, we're still not ready to give the, to, the, uh, to the machine learning algorithm. We have to do a little more, uh, a little more encoding. So this is a small set. Let's say you have a small data set, of a training set, and uh, you collect the values, and this is, the, this is uh, basically the, universe, the, the feature space that you end up with. So you have some certificates with issuer country China, US, Japan, some certificates with version 2, version 3, length of serial number 3, 7. Some certificates have uh, key usage is critical. Some have this value digital signature and key usage and so on. So this is a, a small subset. If we look at one of these certificates, it will be a set of, uh, it will be a vector of zeros and one. In this case, the certificate has issuer country US, it has version 3, it has uh, 7 as the length of the serial number, and, and so on. So we take this numerical vector, zero, uh, zero or uh, zeros and ones, and we feed it to the machine learning algorithm that we, we train, and it, it will tell us if it's, uh, if it's malicious or not. So basically, this is the, the well-known machine learning pi pipeline with details related to our work on, uh, on, on certificates. Now we start looking at, uh, at some results. Uh, what we're mainly concerned with are two, false positive and false negative rates, with more, and more emphasis on false positive rates. And I'll, uh, I'll explain why. So, I, uh, as I mentioned uh, before, the data set has 13,000 that we use here. We, it has 13,200 certs in, in the data set. And we do the train test split, 80-20, meaning we, use, we sample 80% of these certificates. We use that as a, our training data set. We train the model. And then we use the remaining 20% of the certs for testing. The... Uh, we look at these two measures, the uh, false positive rate, meaning the ones that the classifier says they are positive, they are malicious. Out of the, uh, the, number, out of the number that we have that are, uh, that are uh, negative, they are benign, meaning that they classified them as wrongly as, as positive. And uh, this here, the number of the negative is the ones that are truly uh, classified as negative, true negative, and the ones that are classified as, as positive. For the false negative rate is, is very similar, but you know, the mirror image, meaning the numbers that were, the number, that, number of certificates that were classified as, uh, as negative, meaning benign, over the total number of positive uh, certs. So we value, uh, one, this is random forest, and it gives us a probability. And we vary the probability threshold. Like, where, where do we set the, the threshold where we decide it's malicious or not? Meaning, 
So if we increase this, pro this probability threshold from 0 0.5 to 0 0.9, meaning that we want to be more sure that the, uh, that the certificate is, is malicious. The false positive rate, as expected, will uh, decrease from 0.3%, so this is multiplied by 100, and this is percentage, so 0.3% to 0.1%. The uh, false negative rate will uh, increase as we increase this, because you know we want to be more sure, so we miss some certificates that are, you know, look malicious, but not, they don't look very malicious. The probability is, let's say, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, so we miss these, and the uh, false negative rate uh, increases. So this trade-off is, is there, and uh, you have to decide which, uh, which one you care about more. In our case, we, uh, we care about the false positive rate because there is a large number of benign certificates. And if the false positive rate is high, it will give you a lot of warnings or a lot of malicious certificates that are, n are not actually malicious. So you will, be, you will be overwhelmed by the number. So, so this is the, this is the, these are the numbers we get, 0.1%, 5%. And uh, go and say a few words what, what that means. 0.1% means that, false positive rate means that if you have 1,000 benign certs, you will get one cert that's, uh, that is, the, the classifier will tell you out of these 1,000 benign certs, to 12, it will tell you that this is malicious out of 1,000. So for that, you will miss, so out for, uh, in return, 5% means, or 5.5% means that out of 100 benign, out of 100 malicious certs, you will miss five or six. It will tell you it's not been malicious. Or, so this is, the, uh, this is what the numbers mean, and this is a trade-off. As, and as I mentioned before, it's, it's very important that we test this on independent real, real data we collect from the field. And make sure that it's, these results are not just a property of the, of the data set that we have. And uh, the classifier works well in, in the field. So the, uh, now the dependence of the, how does this, uh, how, do, how do these results depend on, on the data set size? Why we look at that? Because as I mentioned, the uh, number of uh, malicious search that we have is, is an issue. We're, it's a, we're bottlenecked on that. We want to make sure that this doesn't, doesn't hurt us. Here I'm plotting the false positive rate. I'm pick, uh, false positive rate as a number of cert, uh, certificates in, in the data set. So these numbers, 2,000, 4,000, et cetera, we sample them from the big data set, which is 13,000 certs. We, we, do the sam we sample many times. For each sampling, we do the test data split also many times. We calculate the, we calculate the, these, the false positive rate, and we, ca we calculate the average, and, uh, and we, we get this result. And this is a probability threshold of 0 0.5 that we saw, uh, we, that we saw before. In, in, in that table, it was the, the false positive rate was around 0.3%. So at the beginning for a small data set, uh, the false positive rate is high, and it decreases, and it saturates. Let's say if, if you fit this to a plot, it will saturate around 6,000 to 8,000 here, and plateaus. So meaning that we, we have a good number of, uh, of certs for, for training. Now, with that, with that said, we continue to harvest malicious uh, certs. You know, we're not stopping here. And why? Because we might, if we want to squeeze out more, uh, more accuracy, you know, a lower false positive rate, we, 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 still, we can still look at more data. We can still do more feature engineering we can look at other, uh, let's say, more complex uh, methods, meaning uh, deep neural networks, and see if this, you know, this trend changes, you know, if it keeps, keeps decreasing with, uh, with the data set size. Me so, meaning we can still gain from this, uh, from this, uh, from collecting more data. 
And also, we can still gain by making the classifier work better in, in, uh, in the field. Um, the final set of results I'm going to show is the, uh, the feature importance. We looked at some of the attributes and how we extract features from them. Um, we used a bunch of them, and uh, we want to get some intuition as to which, uh, which of these features, which of these attributes is more important in determining whether, determining whether a certificate is malicious or not. So this is the, uh, the table for uh, the most important features. This is the uh, feature importance percentage. This is, this is what we get from the uh, random uh, from the random forest classifier. Um, what I'm showing here are the features that have, a, that have importance higher than 1%, one 1%. One so this is the last one here. Other features have, a, have importance lower than 1%. And these all add up to nine, around 93%. So this is the bulk. If you look at, we look at, uh, at these features. So certificate policies, this is an, uh, this is an extension. Apparently it has the highest uh, highest importance. Authority info access. Uh, this usually has links to the certificate authority URLs. Certificate policies has also links to specific policies related to certificate authorities or you know, PKIs and so on. Subject alt names, like different names for a website and so on. Uh, this is TLS, web server authentication and extended key usage. Critical key usage, meaning if the, if the key usage is critical or not. Authority key identifier, this is an ID for the uh, certificate authority, and etc. cetera. This goes down. One here is the um, issuer country, if it's valid or not. So, and then here it's the uh, issuer country, the value of the issuer country, the organization in the, in the issuer uh, entity, and, and so on, length of serial number and so on. And uh, what we see here is that extensions have a particularly high uh, importance and in addition to issuer fields. So you cannot get away without looking at, uh, at these attributes. Also, uh, I want to point out here that this is, there is a lot of uh, randomness. You know, there's a random forest, there is sampling, and so on. So you might run another set of calculations, sampling and averaging and so on. And you might not get this, exa this exact order or these exact numbers. But the most important ones will be there. So this might be the, you know, instead of the third place, it will be the second and so on. But the most important attributes are going to be there. So the order might change a little bit. Now, I'm, I'm going to take the... The, the, the first five attributes and look at, uh, look at them in a little more detail. So I look at the prevalence in the, uh, of these attributes in benign certs and uh, in malicious certs. Basically, the idea is to get some intuition as to what a malicious cert looks like, what to expect, and what a benign cert looks like. So certificate policies is, has the highest importance. And it turns out that it's present in this extension, certificate policies, is present in 95.89% of the benign certs, while it's present on, in only 9.75% of the malicious certs. Authority key info access, same thing, very similar numbers. Subject alt name, again, similar numbers. This is subject alt name meaning whether it's present or not. It has a little bit higher uh, presence in malicious certs than the, than the other two. Critical key usage, it's mostly in, uh, in, uh, in benign. It's mostly absent in malicious. Authority key identifier, similar story, except that it's a little more, uh, more prevalent in, uh, in malicious certs, which is most likely why it gets lower importance than, than, than the, ab the ab above attributes. We go back to, uh, to the sample cert that uh, I saw at the beginning. And we, uh, we look at the extensions, since we saw that the extensions have a very a particularly high importance. Uh, and these are the, uh, 
the attributes or from the extensions, the features uh, that have high importance, and we look at them in, in this cert. Certificate policies, it's not present here. It should be present, usually. Authority info access, not present. Subject alt name, it's present. TLS, uh, web server authentication, it's there. Critical key usage, the key usage here is not critical. And the authority key identifier, it's not present here. So we look, we have some bad features. It's on the wrong side of the feature split, the cert. Some one that are okay, and two that are okay. And here, it turns out that this is actually a, uh, a malicious cert. So. Now, uh, finally, I just saw some, uh, the summary and conclusions of, uh, of this work. So we applied machine learning, I would say, successfully to classify uh, SSL certificate, certificates. We calculated the feature importance and, uh, and prevalence, and this gives us a good intuition as to, you know, looking at a certificate, kind of guessing whether it's good or bad. It's not exact, so usually, you know, you can, sometimes you can see a lot of these features that look good, but, you know, there are other features and it ends up, you know, other features and ends up being bad, so, but you get a good intuition. Uh, studied the effect of the data size, you know, being limited by the number of malicious certs. We studied that and we see that it doesn't, it doesn't really hurt us. Some, some future direction. Uh, obviously, we're going to keep collecting malicious certs. Uh, dig deeper into features, try to squeeze out more accurate, higher accuracy. Again, in the spirit of looking for higher accuracy, we uh, we look into whether we this will help help us using more sophisticated algorithms, mainly deep neural networks, which is very trendy now. Uh, also look at the certs in, the, in a broader context. We, we looked in this study, we're, so far we've been looking at the certificate itself. We, look at, and we can look in a broader context, meaning the certification chain, you know, the parent, child, and so on. More metadata from the TLS traffic, and so on. So with that, thank you. Uh, this work has been done by uh, myself and Abhishek Sharma at the uh, data analytics team at Fidelis, on, uh, by Jason Reeves at the threat research team. Uh, he collected, uh, he has this project of collecting the malicious certs. And uh, we are hiring, so if you're interested, please talk to me or to Daniel with the Fidelis t-shirt. <laughs> and you can look at the uh, Fidelis security uh, website. All right. Thank you. So your benign set is kind of biased towards the most popular sites because it's the Alexa top sites. Do you find that your model still works with far less popular but still benign sites? It might have sketchier, less high level. Yes. Uh, actually, it's it's not only the Alexa 10,000. We use the Alexa 10,000. We sample from that. We also have the uh, census. And there, it's not we sample from that. It has millions of certificates. We sample from those. This, though, that is not necessarily the most popular. Okay. Now, well, it has, uh, you know, it, it has flags, whether these uh, certs are trusted or not. You know, again. It can be trusted and malicious, but you know we're relying on the fact that the percentage of malicious certificates out there in among trusted certificates is low. So there might be a little bit of mislabeling, but you know. Thank. Uh, I assume you've actually set something up to uh, test for the responsiveness of the attacking this in real life. Yes. What's your actual response time? Are you talking about? Seconds, minutes, hours at this point with this particular Oh, no, no, it's definitely not hours, not minutes. It's it, 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 no. close to real time. Repeat the question. So the, uh, the response time in, uh, in, in real life, meaning out there in, on the network, 
you're, collect, you're, uh, you're collecting the certificates, you want to classify them, and how, uh, how fast is that, right? Is, I, uh, we haven't gotten into, into that, uh, that detail yet. Well, we're working on putting that in, in we're working on putting that in the product. Uh, we collect, we have a database we collect from uh, the, these certificates from the data from the, uh, from the field. And looking at one certificate is extremely fast. I, you know, I don't think it's anywhere near a second. So, yeah. True, true. With false positive rate, have you looked at training it on specific sets of malicious certificates in order to lower that false positive rate rather than just all malicious certificates they full set? Oh, specific, like specific types of malware? Uh, we haven't looked at, at that. You know, uh, one reason we haven't looked at, so, the, the malicious, uh, malicious set of certificates. Have we looked at specific, uh, we, have we you know, partitioned the set into different uh, malware types, different actors and so on? We haven't looked at that yet. One reason we haven't looked at that is that we, have, we don't have a large data set. So if you partition it farther, you know, the training is not gonna be good enough. Yes? How the false negatives, considering a lot of people are using this kind of algorithm to bypass and to be able to compromise based on tricking the algorithm into allowing them in? Uh, are you looking at the false negative side too, so at least you can see people toying with that? Yes, so um, I think there is, there is some work towards uh, tweaking some militia, the, some certificates that look benign and making the you know the classifier or fooling the classifier basically this is something in the i haven't mentioned here but this is something that we uh, we're going to be working on is there a feature that you think would have an impact that's not like in what you get from the certificate authority and you wish you had uh, a feature that is not present in the in the certificate itself i I don't have one. I, you know. When we, as I mentioned, we're going to look at the broader context. I'm sure we'll get some uh, something there. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Is your intent to use this as a real-time alerting platform, look at stuff coming across the wire, as a retroactive platform, or what is what is your long-term like what is your expected value? So uh, it's. The, it's, it's like this, you know, we have, we have the sensor. In, in our product, we have, uh, we have multiple components. One of them is the sensor. It's the one that looks, uh, looks at the wire. And this is the one that collects this, uh, the, the metadata. It collects also certificates as part of the metadata. We send it to, the, uh, to a collector where we store the metadata. So we'll have a, a database of certs there. And then we're going to look at the... Uh, we're gonna look at the certificates in that in that database. We can do that in real time. We can look, you know, once it ca the sensor uh, cap captures that certif certificate, we can classify it. But this is not the architecture we're uh, we're designing. We're designing the the other architecture. The sensor sends it to the uh, collector, and then we go to the collector and we uh, we look at the uh, uh, at the certificates in the database. Yes. I see. Yeah, we can go with it, but I think this is not what we're choosing to do. Yes? So your, your malware sample set, um, do you find that it's difficult to maintain an active enough set of samples where the IOCs you extract from them, their callbacks, are still live by the time you reach out to the yeah. I I don't have the details. You know, it's, uh, it was Jason that did, that's doing the, it's Jason that's doing the work. 
I would guess that some of them are not, still not live. I don't know what the ratio is or what the percentage is or you know how limited we are by that, but I'm sure it's, it's there. Yes? Um, what of this is actually available for general use? Like, is any of the data available or the code available? Um, the code, I, I can't answer that, sorry. I, I, I have to check. <laughs> but you know, if you can, if you know, send me an email and you know, I, I will let you know. No problem. All right, thank you.